Chase Snow, Kimberly Snow, they live out here in Cabo San Lucas. I'm down here in Cabo San Lucas. And they have been hitting this agency world from a couple different angles now for the last at least five years that I've witnessed. Of course, Chase used to work with Go Mobile Solutions. Katie, you remember. Katie's been with us for over a decade, so she remembers. Chase was there 2012 at the event, Go Mobile Live, right? He worked in the Newport Beach office when we had an office. What, what's, is there such a thing? Like, people are gonna look back at the fact that people had offices, they're gonna be like, what, really? Like, that's gonna be like eight track. But yeah, we had an office and Chase used to hang out at that office right there on the water in Newport Beach. Um, and you know, he learned about apps, he learned about technology, he learned about customer service, he learned about selling, he learned about speaking. Like it's really cool to be able to inspire our kids with things that we do, you know what I mean? And of course, being around this agency stuff, he got to see a lot of successful agencies. He's got to see the likes of Kevin Wilkie. He's got to see the likes of, of all the different local marketer friends of mine that you've known, he's got to meet them, so has Kim. They've been able to be direct study of Kate Buck Jr. with Go Mobile Social. They are an absolute success story. They have applied selling the strategy sessions. They have applied pretty much basically how Kate goes about it. They've just absolutely just nailed it in their business. They've run an agency, they've brought on clients, They've taken on the sales for those clients, not only the lead generation on the multiple platforms. And so what, when I throw all this at you, what you're gonna know and realize is they have learned every aspect of like all the different social media platforms, trained by some of the best, and actually paid for high dollar masterminds, over $35,000 I know because I had to hear about it. And I had to be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know, cause I'm skeptical about, and I'm not skeptical anymore because what came out of the masterminds and the people they got to meet is some of the magic that you're going to see today. When I talk about magic, I mean, they can not only help drive mad leads to a business, they've gone deep in a niche like Katie always talks about, pick a horse and ride it. They've also taken a little broad approach at the market too. And in the whole process, they've realized that if you don't have the systems all working perfectly, to move these leads and to move all this business and transact this business and stuff, you will fail. Or you will absolutely meet log jams. And so I love the fact that Kim is so detailed, so meticulous, so organized. And she like literally puts, I mean, when I threw the concert, I hired Kim on to handle front, uh, front, front, front gate take, right? So basically the six different types of tickets that were coming in, all the different free stuff that were coming in, all the different stuff that I was working out on the street and all the different vendors and whatever, whatever. And I, she took my shit of a spreadsheet. And I mean, like, I didn't even know spreadsheets can do what she made the spreadsheet do. But what you're going to see today is what she makes click up do. And this is going to totally blow your mind on how you can systematize and automate your business and how you can like really get your lead generation on overdrive. And so Chase and Kim, this is a dual show. They're gonna show you what they do and it's all content today. So I hope you're ready. You can light up the chat room. Chase, Kim, say hi to Go Mobile Community, your family. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for showing up for this. This is awesome. We can't wait to show you guys everything that we have been doing and everything that we have been working on. It's been amazing and it's been an amazing journey. It's been awesome trying to build these six figure companies. It's been awesome trying to serve an entire niche and figuring out exactly, you know, exactly what are the protocols for running Google ads? What are the protocols for running Facebook ads? What are the protocols for managing your team? How exactly do we do that? How exactly do we keep people accountable? How exactly do we make sure that we make sure that our accountability is in place? How do we make sure that we're not over our capacity and making sure that our team can actually handle things and where we're bottlenecking so we can hire new people and all that stuff. We're here to show you guys exactly how we've handled that over the last couple of years and exactly how we built two six figure agents, agencies off of that too. What I'm happy and excited to share with you guys today is just kind of how we get everybody on the same page using this awesome tool called ClickUp. So 
Who's ready to learn about it? <laughs> let's do it. Everybody's lit up the chat room so far, so we're gonna have some fun today, and uh, let's let's rock. You look great tonight. You look be- beautiful. Thank you. I know it's hot. It's it's summer still, right? The kids started school this week, but hey, I still got my clip on. It's just. You know, we make do. And she's not kidding. It is hot. We are sweating our kneecaps off out here. No kidding. It's hot. <laughs> well, cool. I will just jump right into it, my friends. Let me get this uh, thing set up here. So that I have a little slide deck to show y'all. Just because I personally, like, guys, what goes on in my, my head? Like, I'm very organized and structured when it comes to, like Damien said, with spreadsheets and with ClickUp. But when I start talking, like, I'll get off on tangents and stuff. So that's the only reason we put this slide together. So, <laughs> just to keep me on track. But I figure we'll go through the slides. And at the end, I'm so happy to open it up to Q&A to get your guys' input, to get your guys' questions to answer and everything. Uh, does that sound good? Let's go. Awesome. Let me share my screen. So today we will be talking about our agency essentials in ClickUp and pretty much the five systems that you need to for your agency to run like a Ferrari. Credit that to our, our friend Mario on our team. He's like, run like a Ferrari. Pedro was like, hey, fun fact, Bugattis are faster, but hey. <laughs> so with that, what you're gonna learn today, what we're gonna share with you is pretty much the basics behind our method and what we use in our project management system. And today we're talking specifically on agencies. Of course, everybody here runs an agency of some sort, but these principles apply literally to any kind of service-based business. We're gonna talk also about how each of our five systems work with one another. That's what's interesting and funny is each of these systems are all a micro system, each and independent uh, in and of themselves, but they interrelate into the bigger picture of what is our business, of course. And then of course, I'm gonna share with you some tools, tips, and tricks to set up your ClickUp workspace. And I'm gonna be giving you guys all the sauce today about how to design your unique build out for your unique business. That's what's funny is all of our businesses are so unique. Everybody has their own unique flair, service, uh, spin on it, right? And so this is a, just a way, a, a good way to give that framework and to design it what is unique to you. So, but first, just a little about me. Damien told you a little bit about Chase, of course, and how he started at Go Mobile a long time ago. Uh, just to kind of tell you about myself and my journey into ops and entrepreneurship. It was really funny. Uh, Damien's wife, Nikki, Chase's mom, uh, we grew up born and raised in Utah, and my family like runs the IRS, I want to say, right? And so I started out fresh out of high school as a data transcriber in the Internal Revenue Service, but I didn't want to lock myself in uh, with everybody. Uh, Somebody I saw, what is ClickUp? ClickUp is a project management software. And so just to throw that in there real quick, but um, I didn't like being as a data transcriber. I really wanted to just move away it was funny born and raised in Utah I just Chase and I decided um, since I joined the Navy actually both of us joined the Navy and lo and behold little did we know that I was already a week pregnant with our firstborn Randy who just turned 13 that well the Navy wasn't an option we wanted to go to school so we got up we moved away I quit my job at the IRS and we moved to Las Vegas where you'll see a lot of my history here is a lot of sales and marketing especially hospitality I worked on the Las Vegas Strip at the MGM Grand Hotel and at Monte Carlo Resort and Casino as well as Hotel 32 being a lead there now I learned a lot at MGM Grand and it was amazing hey John you're in Vegas I love Vegas it's, it's our old stomping ground and so I loved being in Las Vegas and at the MGM Grand. But when I moved to Monte Carlo and I was working in the VIP lounge and they had their top level floor, Hotel 32, is that um, I wasn't set up for success there. Like a lot of the ladies who were there had been there for many years. And they just like, this is the way that we've always done things. And when I first started into the role is that they, like I had a checklist of stuff to do, but they didn't tell me 
how to do it. And so I had to like literally sink or swim. And so when I was at the Monte Carlo, I built up a lot of their processes and procedures and quickly became the leader trainer of their department and trained all of the people who ran that top penthouse floor where we had all kinds of celebrities that would come in that would, um, you know, be holding the concerts or just whatever. So it was really cool. It was really fun. But our time came to an end in Las Vegas when the Monte Carlo rebranded and renovated they then became yes totally a green bay fan yes um but they rebranded and they became the park mgm so i don't know if you guys know that but park mgm took over what was monte carlo and at that point we took it as a time to say hey maybe it's a time to pack up and leave las vegas and go back to utah at which point we did i returned to the irs after quick short weeks as a marketing coordinator at the wyndham um but for about three years we were business tax cons tax consultants at the irs both chase and myself a lot of times we worked at mgm together we in high school we worked at a ranch house together like it's crazy but um yeah, you'll see just kind of some of these places. But during the pandemic in 2020, we started our new digital marketing agency. We are pregnant with our fourth child. We have four kids ranging from 13 down to two. Yes, Chase, we totally work well together. He's the visionary, I'm the integrator. But it, it's what's really funny is we sold all of our stuff and we just upped and moved to Mexico. We came to Cabo San Lucas. And I'll tell you one thing that's really funny is I didn't quit my job until a week after we moved to Cabo. Like I kind of still had it on the background, like as a as a safety net, right? Are we gonna say something, Damien? I'm saying just because you never know, right? Like you were taking a big leap. It's a huge leap. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's scary. I literally did not quit my job, and so we moved on Independence Day, which is really funny. September 16th and it was a week after my birthday is the 23rd I think I quit like on my birthday or the day before and I was like yeah I'm not coming back so that was the thing after having three kids and like I didn't get enough maternity leave with them I didn't get enough time like after our first two I went back to work after two weeks luckily with our third baby I got an extended period of time because the longest government shutdown in history happened what are the odds, right? But I was like, I'm not going back. And we've never looked back since. And ever since, it's just been a road into entrepreneurship. In 2021, up until now, we've invested heavily into our team, scaling our operation, multiple five figure plus mentorship and coaching programs. And like Damien said, he was skeptical when we first mentioned it to him, but it paid off. And um, pretty much from there, throughout that coaching, like in 2021, after 10 years of working inside Trello, we made the switch to ClickUp. And it was only after just getting a lot of that exposure that we realized if we wanted to scale, Trello wasn't gonna cut it for us, that we needed something else that was gonna better suit our needs. And uh, once we made that switch to ClickUp, just to kind of give you a little bit of background, we worked in a super, super tiny niche, Scout Micropigmentation. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but you know how some people will get like the little um, like microblading or like powder brows or whatever. It's basically permanent makeup for the head. If somebody has thinning hair or is balding, it's just a hair loss solution. So an alternative to a hair transplant, super tiny, tiny, tiny niche. And we dominated that niche after we made this uh, switch to click up, just keeping our team on the same page. What's really funny and it's kind of sad is when we were working in that agency, Chase and myself, along with our third partner, Bryson, who is my brother, and you guys may have seen him on some of the calls here, is there was just a little bit of a misalignment and it happens in business. You know, sometimes you'll go through a business breakup. And so that's ultimately what happened is just, there was a misalignment. We went our separate ways. Some of our team is on the call with us today. Luckily, we had a lot of team members who picked up and left the Pigment Marketing Pros agency with us and moved over to our new business. And within six weeks of building the new business and the new ClickUp user profile, I quickly became a ClickUp Power user. So hopefully that gives you guys just a little bit of a well-rounded feedback of the last you know few years and whatnot. But what we're here to learn today is some ClickUp foundations and some ways for you guys to be able to implement some five core systems to help you out in your agency. So, but first, just to kind of say that is ClickUp is just a tool, 
right? ClickUp is a tool and it starts with you in determining your processes. Our inputs determine our outputs. And so it's what you all built into it. And so hopefully you guys can see some of these screenshots and if not, no worries, but think of what is the desired outcome and what are we producing as inputs? A lot of the time when people are managing companies, like of course, when it comes to like hierarchy, it's very vertical. There's a department, people are managed in a hierarchy. You've got like your uh, technicians, your managers, then your entrepreneur. And it's very vertical in that sense. But results are created horizontally. So in this example, a process like creating a new sales brochure involves the sales manager, the graphic designer, and perhaps the AP or AR clerk, right? For example. So um, your customers, when you think about it, they're not experiencing your business as department by department. Your customer crosses all departments. And so you want to make it as seamless as possible for them in that experience. And so again, ClickUp is just a tool and you control the inputs you control what's inside and so if you give it shit it's gonna give out shit right so pretty much when we can say hey you know this input was terrible we didn't it we didn't set that input up for success and so again it starts with you and determining your processes first so we need less of the vertical hierarchy in the sense of owner manager workers and rather having more of that collaboration between departments. We want to break the silos. Do you two now own ClickUp? <laughs> I'd like to think so. <laughs> We're getting in there. So first of all, now if you've worked with any kind of project management system, you know a lot of those project man management systems work on a hierarchy. And simply the hierarchy is just a way for you to break your work down into more easy to manage groups. And so when you think of it this way and the way of organizing your business operations in ClickUp is it's just a way to break it down into smaller groups. So the workspace, your ClickUp account as a whole is like your building. Like Damien said, back when we had the office on Newport Beach uh, or Pacific Coast Highway, right? And so it's like your workspace is the building. From there, you can create all of these different spaces within it, and maybe you want to categorize those spaces by department, or by the type of work, or by the team. From there, we want to create our lists, and our lists are simply just a way to segment our workflows or task types into, um, you know, just to segment them a little bit further. We can use our folders to group similar lists. So for example, if anybody owns an SEO agency, there's many different core components that go into an SEO agency, like on-page SEO, off-page SEO, technical SEO. Those would all be separate lists that we could group into an SEO folder. And then of course, our tasks actually end up living on the list level. Now it's crazy because you can actually break down even further from there having subtasks, nested subtasks and checklists. So again, though, when you think about it, input versus output and how far you want to go, because I'll be honest, I think it's crazy. ClickUp will allow you to go like seven layers deep as far as nested subtasks. I don't recommend that. I wouldn't recommend going more than maybe two, three tops. But I regress. Just to kind of give you a diagram of maybe what that looks like. Again, your workspace is the building, your spaces, maybe this is our marketing, this is our client space, this is our uh, service delivery, so on and so forth, and lists and folders can live within the space. When you think of it, like just classification of animals, right? So think of vertebrates as our space, warm-blooded versus cold-blooded as our folders, and then we can break it down further. Of course, our mammals versus our birds, fish, reptiles, amphibians, these would be the actual tasks, so to say. So this, this is kind of where I think it's funny. Now, if you guys have worked with any kind of project management software, like I think it's great. Monday says add item. ClickUp, ClickUp calls everything a task. And frankly, I don't like that. 
because it could just be simple data. It could just be a way to keeping simple data. Not everything is a task. So I like to look at it like, cool, this list is designed just to contain data versus this list is designed to contain tasks, our actual to-dos that we need to do, right? And so our list can be designed to facilitate unique workflows. Maybe we're gonna track like our general tasks, our to-dos, or again, reframing it. Maybe we wanna look at this list as a spreadsheet. And essentially a task is just a row on a spreadsheet. And we'll get into it a little bit more, but custom fields are just a way to create your various columns as you would on a spreadsheet. And so uh, the next thing is just kind of the different users that you can use at ClickUp. And let me know if I'm going too fast, guys. What? Well, I was thinking we would do that at the end. What do you guys think, though? Do you guys want a little bit of a open to feedback. Do you guys want a little bit of show and tell as we go or do we want to get through it and then do a walkthrough after? Katie, what do you think? Uh, my gut says show and tell and then walk through. Kind of lay the whole picture and then demo. Cool. Anybody, anybody vote otherwise? We go that direction. No, I think it's okay. I think that way there we kind of hear all about it and then we get to see the whole thing in a, in a flow. Bam. Cool. Awesome. I love it. So there's different kinds of users. Like, of course, as you guys build your teams and as you get more moving parts in the business, there's more people that come into the mix. It's like, who do we have in this space? And so what's really cool with ClickUp is they give you access to add guests. And so guests are free to uh, add in and your members, of course, you're going to pay for. And so, for example, in our ClickUp, most of my team is guests, ironically. Actually, I think currently we only have three paid users. And so depending on what plan you get with ClickUp, it ranges anywhere from like 9 to 19 to 29-ish. And then if you get in the enterprise, I mean, I don't know about that stuff. But we only have three paid seats. Everybody else is guests, which is cool. And so something to know, though, is that when you set up your users, guests are only going to have access to specifically what you grant them to. So if you have a list and you want to grant somebody access to see that list, you can, but that's all they're going to be able to see. Versus if somebody is a member in your space, they're going to be able to see everything unless you specifically lock them out. <laughs> so in certain cases, maybe you want to do that, right? And also, of course, your admins. Your admins are going to be able to have just that elevated level of access to be able to do a little bit more, to control a little bit more, right? Okay. Just some foundation stuff. Now we'll hop into the five systems if you guys are cool with it. So client success, or in other words, account management, it's simply just a place to manage who the hell are our clients, right? Who are we even doing business with? And so again, ClickUp refers to everything as a task, and I don't like that. So a task, in this case, AKA equals a client profile. And what we can do with client profiles ultimately is just build and track data about our clients, who they are, what package maybe they have, how much they're paying us, when they're paying us, what they purchase from us, when does their contract start versus when does it end, all of that good stuff. This is a great place to just be able to centralize any and all information that's related to our clients. I love it too, because on the ClickUp task level, you're able to add attachments. And so in this case, this is a great way for you to attach their agreement form. Maybe you send them an onboarding survey and an onboarding form. You can attach the answers to those, to their ClickUp client profile, um, things of that sort, right? And so what does this mean though? So when I say via custom fields, what does that mean exactly? And we'll hop into that, but there's a few different areas in ClickUp of itself. And again, inputs produce outputs. So it's what you build it to be. And so what I like to do is when I'm talking about these client profiles is what status is this client in? Where would I categorize them? 
So of course, when somebody's brand new and they're just getting onboarded, well, onboarding. Sometimes people go through maybe a stage of buyer's remorse or something like that. So maybe we're all just, you know, they haven't quite progressed through the entire onboarding phase. Maybe we need to pause them versus, hey, who's live, paused, lost, canceled. Again, you can customize your statuses, everything to what, what you want it to be, but that's kind of the way I like to look at it. Now, at every level, so we've talked about the, what we call quote unquote, the vertical hierarchy, spaces, folders, lists, tasks, you can set permissions at each and every level. So if you create a space and you want to AKA lock somebody out, uh, side note, guests cannot be added to spaces. Guests can only be added to the folder or list levels. And so I would recommend, of course, anybody who's involved in client fulfillment, whether they're directly engaging with the clients or fulfilling on specific tasks, they should have access to see this client profile so they know who this client is, what we're doing for them, things of that sort, right? So again, you can set permissions. So I wouldn't recommend to put it private. You want to be able to have your entire operation see who your clients are and what you're doing for them. Some specific views. So views in ClickUp, and again, I think this will help when we go through that walkthrough is I just set up specific filters so I can filter where client is either onboarding or onboarding paused. They're gonna be in my clients and onboarding view versus somebody who's lost or canceled. They're gonna be in my clients in offboarding view. Important dates, maybe you wanna keep track again of the contract start date versus end date. Maybe you wanna keep track of your client's birthdays so that you can send them a birthday gift or something that right that's going to help with the retention and just recognizing maybe you want to keep track of their one year anniversary you know important dates are a good thing now reactivation list this is something that i like so potential reactivation have you guys ever had an instance where a client they want to take a break right or they're like we know that there's ebbs and flows throughout the year and we know when those seasonal changes make where you know throughout the the holiday season people kind of spend less i feel like when uh travel and retail is up marketing is down and vice versa right and so maybe when somebody gets through a specific hurdle in their business or something like that you may want to be able to keep track of somebody who stopped service and having come in at a certain time of year to try and reactivate them right Maybe you come out with a new offer or a new product or service that you're like, hey, Mr. Client, you had this experience with us before. How about you come in and try this new thing we've got going on, right? And so that's what I like to think about potential reactivation list is this is a really great way for you or if you have a sales agent to be able to just come in and like, hey, cool, Mr. Client, let's get you back up and going with this new product or service we have. Or since, you know, the the slow season has uh, passed us, let's let's reactivate you and get your marketing started back up now that we're in the, the up season. Assigned team. So maybe you have specific people who facilitate specific workflows with your clients if you have a multi-person team, like in an SEO agency, for example, maybe you have your account manager versus your content writer versus your project manager. That's just a great way to say who is the team member that's assigned on this client's deliverables, essentially. And so your views, so to say, just create a way for you to focus in on the data that's specific to you. And this will make a lot more sense, I think, when we do that one. Now, automations. Automations are great, but sometimes automations, <laughs> they get a little crazy, right? So I like to just use automations, I think, a little bit sparingly, which is funny because we run an automations and systems agency right now. But sometimes we know where there's times where a creative human brain or a special human touch is better than just a, a computer action, right? 
but we do like to use automations to help streamline our workflows in certain senses. So let's say we onboard a client, AKA when this task is created or AKA when this client profile is created, what templates or what tasks might we have to do to successfully onboard this client? So that's just kind of the way I like to look at it. So just to kind of show you what these client profiles might look like, it's funny, I've got Google Solutions in here as an example. So when I talk about custom fields, AKA when you think of it and relate it to just columns on a spreadsheet, these are your columns on that spreadsheet. So what information do you want to keep track of on your clients? Maybe you want to keep track of who is the business owner, who's your primary contact, what is that primary contact's name, phone number, you know, anything of that sort. My favorite thing, because of course, as we know, dealing with client work and business is we want to check in with them quite often. So the last check-in date versus the next step date and even next step summary, kind of see these things, but it's really good way to just keep track of all of those dates. When was the last time we talked to this client? When should we check in with this client next? What has this client bought from us? What would we rate this client's health level at? You know, not everything is sunshine and rainbows. Sometimes we go through these ebbs and flows. And so maybe this client's health level is a two. That's a great way for you to keep tabs on who needs that special attention and focus and those extra touch points, right? What time zone are they in? Where are they located? All of these things are super awesome and amazing because ClickUp has all of those different views. We could view all of our clients on a map and see all over the world where those people are located. And if let's say in certain lead generation agencies where they have a non-compete clause or they you know can't take on too many people because it's a conflict of interest, that map comes into an awesome view. Maybe we want to keep track of their Facebook link or their Instagram link or anything and everything like that. Maybe we want to be able to attach their onboarding form or we want to attach their service delivery agreement. Any and all resources that you want to keep track of on this client profile, that's what the client profile should do. It's just be a way to keep track of who your clients are, what you're doing for them, and any and all related specific information about them. So, we'll move on to the next slide. And again, I think it would be really cool to go through the walkthrough. But the next thing is our service delivery space. So, we have our client profiles here, but then we also have our deliverables, our tasks, or things that we're doing for our clients separately. And there's this awesome feature in ClickUp that's called a relationship. We like to relate those together. So, you'll see these right here. This is what is a relationship. Now, this client didn't have any specific relationships, but um, in this case, the way where we manage our tasks versus where we manage our profile, and then they come together. That's what's cool. So some folks, it's funny, I've been inside a lot of ClickUps. Uh, I've helped a lot of people build their ClickUps out, and I've seen it done a, a multi multitude of ways, and I've kind of dialed it down to, do you want a centralized? or a decentralized approach. So that's the very first thing that you want to do is you want to decide on which approach you want to take. And I kind of have a little bit of a rule of thumb on how I do this. If you're working with just a really small client pool, you could do a list per client, right? What I like about this approach is you, again, because we can add guests into our ClickUp, so you could add your client as a guest on that list if you took that list per client approach just for that added transparency right they're able to come in and look at the list and see all of the deliverables that you're doing for them um, and we're all on the same page at all times but it's not very scalable right if you're working with a, a large client pool that gets to be a lot if you have like i've heard of some agencies that we work with that have like 70 active clients and if you have 70 lists that gets to be really crazy really fast and so the d or rather the centralized approach is where we group all of our client tasks all of our deliverables into 
one spot or maybe like just a few separate spots, maybe we categorize it based on the task type. And then we're able to relate that task or relate those workflows to the client that they belong to. And so that's one thing that you want to uh, take place. So when you end up creating the tasks, task list, whether you go by client, per client themselves, or I prefer to do the centralized approach is how are we going to design this list? There's a few different ways. So if you want to separate it either via a workflow type, so as we know, SEO is much different than the app development versus is much different than website development, which is much different than a blog uh, agency or like, a, you know, somebody who just does content writing. All of those workflows are very unique, but it's cool. You can actually segment your workflows on a list type. Um, again, we talked about how you can add certain people in. If you go the list per client, you can bring them in and invite them to see what's going on on that particular list, like kind of on a need to know basis. And again, when we look at it, like it's just a glorified spreadsheet. We can build our quote unquote columns. And so we can hyper segment our data based on what type of task is this? Or what is certain information that we need to keep track of? In our case, we do a lot of media work. And so input slash output links. All right, let's have a Google Drive folder that facilitates all of the input files. Maybe we've got five different video clips versus our output file is a singular video URL in our Google Drive folder. What draft number is this? Who is supposed to review this? There's all kinds of things that you can do. And even in this case, because we do a lot of media work, uh, you can have on the task level have different attachments. So maybe you want to attach a mood board or a reference file, or maybe you want to attach some screenshots from the client for their, um, you know, their feedback or something like that. Maybe you want to attach the Dropbox folder where that content lives for this specific task. So that's one thing that's pretty cool. So if you guys have worked in any other kind of project management softwares or just in general, I mean, a lot of times when it's simple, it's awesome. If you have a, a to-do list and you have a cute little checkbox, if it's just to-do versus complete, that's all it is. It's a simple check mark. Hey, I've done this. But sometimes it's not as black and white. Yeah, look at that, Katie. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so sometimes it's not as black and white, right? Um, if you had just to do versus done, it's just a simple check mark. But sometimes some things need to progress through different stages. And so it just depends on what you want to set it up. That's what's amazing is on each list level, each folder level, or each status or space level, you can create unique statuses. And so we'll kind of talk on the next slide a little bit more about what that looks like. Again, you can set your permissions at each level. So I recommend whoever is involved in client fulfillment, whether that's in-house team members, or maybe you outsource to a vendor for a specific thing, you wanna be able to give certain people access to that list to be able to facilitate the workflow that's needed. And so uh, some views that I like, like one of my favorites is by date, and priority. So what that means is it's going to say, cool, it's going to show everything that's overdue first, and then what's today, and then tomorrow, and then the next day, and so on and so forth, but also by priority. So let's say we have two tasks that are due today. The one that is urgent versus the one that is low priority, the urgent one's going to show first. So that's a great way for you to prioritize what tasks you should be working on. Um, this will make a little bit more sense, I think, as we go through the walkthrough. But it's the views are simply just a way for you to hyper focus on specific data, on specific things that you want to focus on to ensure that your operation is flowing as it should be. Now, some things like automations, 
maybe in this case, if there's multiple people involved, let's say um, there's multiple people involved and somebody has to do one thing before the other person can take you know, their actions as part of their part of the relay race. And so if let's say there's a review stage when a team member says, hey, this is ready for review, they don't have to do all this other stuff. All they have to do is just say, hey, ready for review. And it's gonna automatically get assigned to the person that should review it, right? And so it's minimizing steps, it's minimizing activities and actions that that person has to take. They've done their part, all they have to do is take one action and say, hey, this is ready for review. And the person who is supposed to review it is going to automatically get notified and be able to do that. And so just a few different examples, because general tasks, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with a lot of project management things like a scrum versus a, a Kanban board or whatever, you know, you can set these up. So general task to do versus done or in progress versus on hold. Something's holding me up from being able to do this. Like general tasks make sense a lot of the time, but if you create a specific list to facilitate a certain workflow, AKA maybe media production or writing blog articles, or even when it comes to app development, right? There's a certain flow that the project needs to go through. And so that's why it's great to separate your um, tasks based on the workflow so that you can set these unique statuses and keep track of the specific stages that a project must go through in order to reach completion. And this is just kind of an example of this in action. This is a screenshot of one of our clients uh, projects that we built out for them just showing all these different things like we can categorize all of these things by what task type so he runs a face pretty much a, a lead generation agency where he runs facebook ads to a many chat cycle but you know you can see like all right we're able to categorize our tasks based on is this an onboarding task is this a Facebook ads task? Is this something that we have to do in many chat? Or do we need like a creative or some copy for an ad, you know, something of that sort. Um, and this is where you can see that this task actually relates to that client profile. So if we were to go into the client profiles, we could see all the tasks that are related for this specific client. And so it's really cool to do. Um, it's funny, these were just mock-ups for them, so all the due dates are past due. But what I love is, uh, when you think of it this way, this is a great way and an amazing tool just to keep everybody on your team on the same page about what is going on with this task. We can use these statuses and the comments on a task by task basis just to keep track of what's going on. You know, this is on hold. Why is it on hold? Well, you can review the latest comment just to see why it's on hold because of X, Y, Z, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so capacity defense. So we've already talked about client profiles and the client tasks. And of course those relate together, but I'm sure you guys have other tasks that happen that are completely unrelated to your clients and something that you have to worry about within your own business. And so that's what I love to use capacity defense for is this is a place to manage your own internal company tasks, your own internal company compares, affairs, and maybe like KPIs, right? Key performance indicators. So we'll talk about the different things that we like to break this up into. And so I have a few different folders within the capacity defense space. So pretty much the first three, boom, 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 emergencies, buds, routine tasks, and then projects this quarter, those are all tasking lists, right? Versus the ideas list, much like we talked about in the beginning, that's just data, that's just information. An idea is just an idea, and we wanna be able to keep track of those ideas, but we don't want those ideas 
to interrupt our specific deliverables and workflow. So it's a great way to kind of isolate them because not every idea is a good idea. We need to go through and evaluate them. And so with that, uh, routine tasks might be, of course, something that you do daily or weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually. That's a great place to, to facilitate where those tasks are and categorize what day we do. Now, a rule of thumb that I like to do when we, when we talk about tasks and getting shit done is there must be an assignee, there must be a due date, and I feel like there should be a priority level because that way you're gonna be able to judge, is this urgent versus important? Is that high priority versus low priority? If something's a low priority, you might be able to kick that can down the road a little bit more, right? And then daily reporting. So we use this a lot with our team. My favorite thing is BOD, beginning of day versus end of day. Beginning of day projections. Let's look at the day ahead. Like. What tasks do you have on your table ahead today? What are the three things that if you got done today would make today a total win for you? So we just kind of like to say, all right, let, let's look at this. We keep our team on track too. Just like, hey, did you check your notifications? Um, and things of that versus end of day, we're like, all right, did you get three things done that you said you wanted to get done? And if you didn't, what did you get done instead? What went well today? what didn't go well and is there any support or guidance that we can offer you tomorrow to make you know to ensure that the gears keep turning kpis no business is going to scale without data without those kpis and so it's a really great place to also keep track of like your sales performance if you have a call center marketing financial all of that good stuff each team member or yourself Without that data, we're unable to make educated decisions in our business. And so that's a great way to facilitate like those daily reporting of those metrics so that you can measure that information over time. So some statuses that we might use, again, the first three were just general tasking areas. So cool, is, is it a to-do? Is it in progress? Is it done? Where are we at with that? And when I talk about ideas, so again, because we want to keep our ideas separate from our actual workflow, we actually have a process to evaluate those ideas and then decide, all right, are we going to execute or are we going to abandon this idea? With permissions, pretty much anybody who's involved in your internal team projects, much like with the client success and the service delivery, anybody who's involved in client fulfillment, but here we're worried about ourselves and our growth and our, you know, things that we need to do. So anybody who's involved with your internal operations and projects, definitely you want to give them access. I wouldn't mark them as private. Views, so uh, activity, and we'll show this a little bit. I love the activity views. You guys will see that. But when I talked about the frequency, if it's daily versus monthly, quarterly, annually, then kind of breaking that stuff up. Ideas, all right, cool. Our idea overview, and we're going to vote. We're all of our team members get to have a vote in the say of which ideas we're gonna actually implement and execute on. And then some automation. So, all right, cool. When, same thing, anything gets changed to review, all right, it's gonna automatically loop Katie in to review, or it's gonna automatically loop Hugo in to review this type of task based on the condition that it was marked as ready for review. System number four, damn, I'm making a good time too. System number four is just a place to manage your team, tools, and any kind of resources that you have in the company. So this is like AKA our Pacific Coast Highway building, right? This is a way to keep track of all of those moving parts in the business. And I like to separate it into a couple different folders. So we have our team folder and we have our tools folder. So when it comes to our team, much like we have client profiles, AKA, again, I don't like how ClickUp calls everything a task. Monday says add item, but instead of a task, we have our team member profiles. Who is the person on our team? Where are they located in the world? What time zone are they in? What role do they fill? 
and then actually breaking down the role. All right, cool, great. Here's this role that we have in our business. What are the, what's this job description? What are the responsibilities of this role? How do we measure success in this role, AKA using a job scorecard? What does success look like in this role? What KPIs, what key performance indicators is this role responsible for? And I love, much like we have, pretty much we all know about client acquisition. When you think about team acquisition and when you scale, literally it's the same process, but just a little bit different uh, with hiring candidates. So when you think about having a pipeline for your candidates um, and just saying, cool, application was received, interview completed, hired for the role, not hired for the role. We just kind of have a way to facilitate those types of people. Also, I love keeping track of tools. I have a list that keeps track of all of the software that we use in our business and what status of that software, because sometimes we come up with the, you know, new and awesome software that we want to use, but maybe over time there's a newer, better software that comes into place that we're ending up going to switch that out with. Resources like keeping track of certain templates that you use, actually I have a different template library but keeping track of certain links and, and things of that sort SOPs actually have a SOP I'm creating SOPs right having a library where all of that stuff gets uh, stored and even finances so a lot of people will use QuickBooks and I'm not by any means recommending that you should ditch QuickBooks and go to ClickUp but it's a great way for maybe you have like I've worked with another client who he gives some of his uh, managers access to the company credit card to go out and make purchases on behalf of the company. But by, at, by being able to facilitate a system where those uh, purchases get tracked, we're able to have a form in ClickUp that says, all right, what was this purchase for? Who authorized this purchase? And upload your digital copy of the receipt to this and then from there, they'll file their paper receipt in the appropriate place. So again, it's just a great way to keep track of all of the other various miscellaneous moving parts in your business. And so some statuses that you might use depending on what it is. If there's a team member, is this team member active versus inactive? Uh, software, maybe we're checking out a trial of the software versus somebody recommended the software to us, but we're not really going to use it quite yet versus, hey, we tried this software and we're not currently using it. So again, ClickUp is what you build into it and it's fully customizable. Um, permissions. In this case, for Business HQ, I definitely recommend your leadership team yourself as the owner, if you have any other managers, integrator, ops manager, any other admins, or anybody who's basically on a need to know basis. Like, I like thinking of the team member profiles as a team member directory, and I like having all of the team the ability to see the entire team member directory. But as far as all of the other little nitty gritty stuff, as far as the hiring candidates, or the finances, like nobody else needs to see that. Only me and Chase really need to see that, right? And then the views, so cool. Maybe if we're looking at the hiring candidates, what hiring stage are they in? Did we only just receive their application or have they already progressed to the interview stage? Uh, who's active or what software is active versus inactive? Again, your views are simply a tool to just hone in your focus on what specific data you want to focus on. And so this is just kind of an example. This is our software list. And so what I love to do is we have this list that keeps track of all of the software that we use in our business. And we have a way to be able to actually uh, see some general wiki information like how to log in or how to use this specific tool. And so you can see like Zoom, we pay per user on an annual basis. We, you know, and then when is this bill going to be due? And so um, much like these other ones monthly, so you can see what we pay monthly per user, you know, and things of that sort versus is it on a trial, which those look out to date. That's not a trial. I have a full active thing. So that's cool. That's fine. 
and then account status and who has access. So when we talk about, we have our team members list, that's what's cool is the power of relationships and ClickUp is we're able to say, cool, who has access to Whimsical versus who has access to Google Workspace? And if a certain team member does not work out, when it comes time to unfortunately let that team member go, where do we need to remove access as needed? Our SOP library. So this is a way to keep track of our standard operating procedures, AKA a way to help somebody execute this process. And so again, ta uh, ClickUp calls everything a task, so 15 tasks. And I'm like, no, like it's, when you think of it as columns and rows, this is 15 SOPs, right? And so we, we name this based on the SOP that it is. Uh, you could have an assigned team member, like who is in charge of this SOP? Who is responsible for updating this SOP, the owner of it, AKA if a process changes or if the system changes, who's gonna be the one to facilitate updating this? And then actually rating your SOPs. So in this one, how to perform LinkedIn outreach, we don't even have an SOP for that now. We need to create one versus, you can see which ones we rate as strong versus what might be a stretch or, you know, weak. So it's a great way just to keep track of all of these interlinking things. Because when we keep things in our brain and as our business continues to get more complex, we got to get these things out of our brain and, and somewhere else, especially if you're bringing some other people into the mix. And so it's a great way just to keep everybody on the same page. And it's funny actually. So you'll see here like our team member directory, again, AKA task name is the team member name. Due date is the date that the team member leaves or the contract ends. In this case, nobody's ending. Um, and so this is a great way. All right, which department is this person in? or where are they responsible? What's their work email? Where are they located? Uh, what role do they fill? Guys, I fill 15 hats. Actually, this needs a little bit of updating, but <laughs> there's multiple hats. And so when you can lay out all of the different hats that are in your business, it's so much easier at a certain point to be able to be like, all right, I need to give this hat to somebody else, right? Yeah, I love what you said, Chase, build for the future. When you can think of the company that you want to become and you lay out each role as a separate role and you're like, cool, I'm wearing 15 hats. I'm responsible for 15 roles right now, but I know that's not always going to be the case is I'm going to be able to give those out to other people as I continue to scale and grow and bring new team members on. Ah, number five our marketing space. So a place to manage our content, like our content, like we want to be able to promote ourselves and our own stuff. And as you guys have probably seen now, like literally in the last three days, I love what you said about that, Chase, the uh, franchise kind of thing, you can get the same hamburger that you can in LA versus Las Vegas versus New York. You can even have high school kids come in and do this without tripping all over each other. That's that's what we're talking about. It's building a system where you're able to easily insert anybody in and it works. So content marketing, and we've just seen this, especially in the last few days, like Facebook has become extremely volatile. A lot of people that have relied on like Facebook ads and things like that, especially post iOS 14 updates and, and all that, where people are like, oh my gosh, I need to, I need to rely on organic. Or if any of you guys went through Google Mobile Social with Kate, like learning a lot of that stuff, it's just like, oh my gosh, yeah, I can't just run ads. Like I need to build a list. I need to put, be putting content out there. So the Content Marketing Institute defines content marketing is a strategic marketing approach focused on creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience. I wanna, I wanna hone in on that, a clearly defined audience, AKA you have your customer avatar in place, and ultimately to drive profitable customer action. And so with that, this space is designed to be a way to keep track of all of your content, 
campaigns, projects, and KPIs, because if we're not measuring, we don't know where to improve. And so we have three separate lists or folders where we categorize a lot of our content. So we have a space where we just manage our independent uh, content. This is where we're producing our graphics, our copy, our images, and our videos, singularly. Sometimes those singular pieces of content come into a greater project or come into a uh, greater campaign, right? So the marketing projects is where that collective media all comes into place, like a website or a landing page, for example, is gonna have tons of different images and or videos and a bunch of different copy. And so it all gets to come in together into a greater picture. And then without tracking, we don't know Without that data, we have no idea where we can improve. So by having a system in place to be able to facilitate, all right, how many clicks did this specific piece of content or ad get? What's our view count? How many subscribers do we have? How many opt-ins did we get? What's our click-through rate? How many impressions? And by being able to track those KPIs over time, you're gonna know what content performs better what content you should continue to make on versus if it bombed, like, oh shit, we shouldn't make that anymore. <laughs> and so some contents that are some statuses that we do, especially in the content areas, like, all right, again, ideas. So maybe an idea is just an idea until we qualify it, right? And then once it actually gets approved, it's gonna move into the pre-production phase. We're gonna plan, we're gonna outline things of that sort versus production. All right, great. We're going to write, we're going to film, post-production, we're going to proofread, we're going to edit, um, update required, like, oh, hey, there was a typo, or hey, like, we, we, we missed a, a part in the audio that dropped out or something, so it can kind of go back in versus, all right, this is done. This is ready to be posted. So we have, like, a, some of these views, just kind of like our ideas, our production. Again, just views are able to hone in your focus on specific things and very similarly much like those things just whatever automations you want to be able to pass off the torch in the relay race to the next person you can use automations to be able to facilitate that and so this is just a screenshot of somebody's uh, production list that we made and so this is where they do their internal company marketing production they actually have a form that enters in those new ideas. And then after the ideas, of course, are um, qualified, then they move into pre-production, production, post-production, post and we can actually categorize, cool, what type of content is this? And what platform is this content going to be posted on? From there, oh, this is an example from ours. Ours was a little bit more complex. And so, um, like what is the category versus what step? Oh, am I good? Okay. And so um, the content category versus the step, when we think about a, a buyer's journey, first there's that initial awareness, consideration, evaluation, invite, conversion. So what stage of the buyer's journey is this content designed to facilitate what format is this is this supposed to be a video is it going to be a you know some sales copy is it going to be an email sequence just a general image all of that good stuff know grow engage invite what objective is this content supposed to be for all of that good stuff and what draft like if this went through other specific drafts like all right draft one uh we need to change this and that okay cool draft number two um it's just a great way to keep again uh it's all about what you kind of build into it what you want it to be this is just some stuff that we found that was important for us to track in our specific marketing space but the concept is is that if you build things with modular elements you can go from this where it's just kind of like craziness, right? To actually being neatly compiled and, uh, you know, presented with a story to help just keep everybody, again, on the same page and whatnot. So from there, 
again, I, I know I kind of went through it really quick. I wanted to make sure that uh, we got through it, but I'm I'm so happy to open this up to to Q and A to give you guys that live walkthrough through our ClickUp. If you think that that would help you a little bit, like what do you guys think? What are you struggling with when it comes to your processes, your content production, your team management, your project management, all of that good stuff? All right, fantastic. So let's get some uh, engagement here. If you have some questions that have come up, I'm sure some questions have come up watching all of that. So uh, let's see what we've got. Katie, how about you? Do you have any questions? How, how, how about how meticulous? <clears throat> so I'm just curious as to how this fits into the other tools like a robust CRM. Um, yeah, what would be on what level is ClickUp amongst the tools and the errors are a hierarchy where does click up yeah so pretty much your with when you think of click up as your business operation system facilitating your team and the deliverables whether it's deliverables for yourself or deliverables for clients that's what it's going to be primarily designed for now what i love and i'm happy to show you guys a little bit of walkthrough is our click up talks to our like sales CRM and so for us and what we talk about is like when it comes to sales people is that we don't want them seeing all this stuff they don't care about the operations they don't care about the fulfillment they just want to keep their blinders on and focus on sales and so we've kind of and I'll show you a little bit through it we've designed like our main ClickUp dashboard to talk to our CRM and vice versa but I do like the idea of keeping sales and fulfillment somewhat separate because yeah your sales team just wants to be focused on sales and only sales versus your fulfillment team is clients I think now we need to see it now, now that I'm hearing you say that I'm like okay I, I gotta draw my eyes to that because we got about 10 12 minutes or so so let's go ahead and do the demo um, keep, yeah there you go the escape out of this Okay, so I've actually created a master dashboard, which I'll show you guys about. So here's just a quick look inside our live ClickUp. Let's just hide those one, two, three, four, five. Ours is a little bit different because we work with a very small client pool. We actually do have a uh, per client uh, list level, but a lot of the other ones that I build with, and you'll see here that I've got a lot of ClickUp accounts that I'm in, Pretty much everybody else who's in here has a centralized approach because they're working with massive amounts of clients but we like to take that list per client approach just because we work with a smaller candidate pool and this is the thing too guys is you want to consider yourselves as a client right and so you'll see that we've got ourselves kind of as a client here but all of this so HQ which we talked about where we've got our expenses team tools resource management right there's no tasks that are taking place there that's just data the only place where tasks are taking place is here and capacity defense inside our ideas we've only got one two three four places where we're keeping track of tasks everything else well aside from marketing is just data um, so we've created a few different dashboards that's what's really cool about ClickUp is you can create all these other dashboards and so this is a tool that our team uses between the dashboard itself and then notifications this is how our team communicates 90 percent of the time our communications in ClickUp there's a little bit of slack activity here and there we have a Facebook 911 chat where where like it's internet's out or whatever but this is the great way to centralize all of this information into a singular place and so like uh, I've got a little quick links section I've got a little entry form like prospect entry form for example this is where somebody could come in and if they found a lead that we might want to enter we use actually high level right now and so this is a way to enter somebody into our CRM if they identify a lead and so that's kind of the outbound like how ClickUp can connect to our CRM um, versus let's say all right cool here's our Snowhouse Google Drive folder this is going to bring us in as just a way to centralize all of your tools and resources 
uh, into a singular spot versus, all right, let's go look at our our client Google Drive folder so you can see all of like our active clients and you know how we can quickly and easily get to their stuff. Um, here's our BOD login form. So this is what all of our team members fill out at the beginning of the day, their name, today's date, and what time they expect to log off. I ask them, I'm like, hey, did you check your notifications? What's funny, me and Chase are always the ones that are guilty of saying, no, but I'm going to right now. <laughs> but it's a great way to like think, and it's like, all right, no, yes, I'm on top of it. I'm like, ah, no, I'm going to right now, though. Did you already respond to your notifications? Again, 90% of our communication takes place here. Did you already check your dashboard? Yep. And what are the three things that you can get done today that would be a total win versus end of day reflections? That's when we're able to actually like, hey, did you complete all the three things you said? And if not, what did you accomplish instead? What went well? What didn't go well? Um, this is where we like just have a resource to like our one page impact plan. And so our quarterly theme is level up or level out. And our North Star is if our clients aren't winning, we're not winning. Just what are some of our objectives um, versus, you know, our vision, market leader positioning. What are our core values? We've got that's seven. Oh, that's, that's how I, that's how I used to run my operation a long time ago. <laughs> The whole sales so I, when you said that i'm thinking man 23 year old damien running the sales <laughs> level up or level out bitches yeah exactly sorry, sorry. So, kimberly did you create that yes yeah it's fantastic thank you um kimberly, i just got a question for you while you're doing this because otherwise i won't get it in what's the best advice you've ever received in your entire life just the best advice you've ever received Don't take things personal. Okay. That's a good, that speaks for itself. Perfect. Roll. Keep rolling. <laughs> uh, done for you systems board. So we have a few different services that we do, and this is our two main ones. So this like just goes out to a, a whimsical board where we document like, yeah, like we use whimsical for a ton of stuff. So you guys can see if I zoom out, I've got a bunch of stuff in here. This is for our main service delivery versus our content stuff. This is Chase's area. I'm, I'm in the other area. This is Chase's area, pretty much. So here's all the stuff that's gone into building our marketing system and all of the different steps in the customer journey. So again, it's just a great way if you have a custom dashboard to link to a lot of those frequently used assets in your business by minimizing clicks, increasing efficiency, um, and just eliminating a lot of that, like, where do I go? It's it's all right here. Our team knows what to do all the time. Team World Clock, this one's awesome. We have actually, our, our Mario's probably on here right now. Or maybe not, I don't know, because he's in Germany and it's apparently 2.21 in the morning. He just moved from Ecuador to Germany like two days ago. And so we're like, all right, let's add this to our, our team clock so we can keep track of we're in Cabo, Hugo's in Durango, uh, Pedro's in Venezuela, we've got a client in London, uh, Mario's in Germany, we've got uh, Mashvik on our team who's in Bangladesh. So it's a great way for us to just kind of have this tool. So again, it's just a great way to resource, like centralize all of your tools. I like to put a, a fun little GIF here every day. Like it's the weekend now. What? Huh? Oh, okay. So like, for example, Jiffy, let's just say happy Friday. This is just when you when you have a team, when it's more than just yourself, it's a great way to facilitate that like culture and that fun stuff. Uh, what's up, Joe? You got a question for me? Yes. You know, I wanted to ask you, at what point would you recommend using ClickUp? Because I can definitely see, uh, I mean, a lot of value when you have a lot of data and you need to pull it and this looks like a, a very good centralized place to have your have your um, have it like in the dashboard um, but I mean but if you're if you have a few uh, a few clients or you're just starting to to gather data do you recommend like already starting these these uh, procedures or processes or way that you have data to start plugging them into the system yeah, absolutely. I mean, honestly, I feel like if 
a lot of folks, because again, it's like when we're entrepreneurs and we've got a lot of ideas in our head. And if you feel like it's just like, you know what, it's starting to become really hard to manage all of these ideas and all of these things. And I really just need a place to, to offload this information out of my head into a system. I definitely recommend ClickUp. And they do have a free forever plan. It's, it's kind of basic, like you don't get a whole lot of um, extra, what we call like those custom values. Of course, you can see on the next, the $5 per month plan, $9 if you pay it per month to get unlimited custom fields. But it's an amazing way. I recommend even if you're if you're just struggling right now to keep up with um, all of the day to day and just a way to facilitate getting some of that information out of your head. And rather than so this is something I've struggled with, too, guys, like I've got this notebook here of tons of stuff I go through, like, honestly, a shit ton of notebooks. Like I've got tons in here right now, but I've been like, in order to avoid that, and you know, instead of having to flip through pages and pages and pages, yep. yeah, you have click up docs and you have those tasks. So if you want to avoid writing things down and um, just again, uh, being able to have that one single centralized place, I would totally recommend click up as your way. And, and again, they've got the free plan. Um, to be able to to start using it just to kind of get your feet wet, just to kind of start playing with it. Yeah, this was a good answer for Joe because, you know, it's not incredibly expensive and, and nobody's getting any affiliate fees on this stuff. This is just like, this is a tool that's out there. And, you know, obviously Kim and Chase have just rocked it on this tool. Uh, but it is, you know, just straight. I mean, my opinion to answer your question, when it's priced like that, then it's, yeah. It doesn't matter if you have one client or no clients or a bunch of clients. I think it's something that we have to look at our business operation and set it up for success. We have to set it up for success. You know, you will land more clients um, and be ready for them from the get-go. I, I highly agree with that. Oh yeah. Definitely I have a question. All right. Uh, um, so, go ahead, go ahead, Katie. Just two questions. One, um, in considering do you still have the screen real quick, Kim? Just see, oh, there you go. Right. Okay, and considering ClickUp, what are the alternatives so that I don't waste my time? If, if ClickUp is it, then I, you know, let's go. You know what I mean? And then the, oh, what was the other question? Darn it, oh shoot, I lost it. <laughs> anyway, maybe we'll come back. Yeah, no worries. So some of those alternatives out there, again, we used Trello. Was it in for what it connects to? Was, was it in what it integrates with? Was that going to be your question, Katie? Something? No, it had to do with just a, a, off, a side question that came to mind is, where does Excel stand, come in here? Because I use Excel a lot to manage data. Well, manage do you stuff. see what Chase just put in there? Don't manage your business through Excel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of funny. Oh, that's scary to me. Super fast. Maybe I'll show you something because it's funny. I We have a client who right now was running and he's got multiple actually he's here in Cabo his um, he runs a couple of different gyms and he was running his business like his Cabo San Lucas location ran an Excel file versus his San Jose del Cabo ran a different uh, Excel file and we were able to bring them all together on the same page into like a singular form that's powered by the cloud that keeps everybody on the same page at all times. Um, and I'll just kind of show you this here. This is what it was before. If I come into downloads, look guys, my downloads folder is really clear. Uh, let's find my clients folder. Let's see if I, da, 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 clients. I've got a lot of stuff in here. Client files, motivated. So here you can see all these Excel files that he had. And we converted those Excel files into ClickUp. And so it's like, this was one location. And these were the other location. And it was crazy. And so like, is this the one? Let's see. And so we imported all of the data out of Excel and into ClickUp. Let's just go over here. There we go. Let's go back. So yeah, it was, it was kind of crazy. This is what they were running off of before. You know, and this is the CSV, so it's not like super great, but you can see how exactly it translates from a simple spreadsheet into, uh, you know, something else. So this is what it was before. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a ton of data, like 
15, oh my gosh, a lot of different rows, right? And then we were able to actually bring it into ClickUp when you can have these visuals like, all right, what location did they sign up at? What type of membership do they have? I see. Uh, what are their details? those colors and and again because it's powered on the cloud and with an excel file the excel file is just stuck on yeah. the computer versus when it's cloud-based everybody's on the same page at all times um, yeah. but to answer your other question about some other tools there's plenty of other ones out there like monday.com is another awesome tool i still prefer click up of course but monday some folks will use monday apparently look i'm signed into uh, a client's Monday. We're in the process of migrating him from Monday into ClickUp next week. So this is kind of cool, actually. You know, this is what he had versus now we'll be moving him into uh, into ClickUp. Actually, this is his account right here, funny enough. Um, you've got Monday, you've got Trello, of course, and I love Trello. Actually, I still use Trello today, ironically, for my um, recipes in my shopping list. I'm trying to convert it over to ClickUp, but I, I've i been building this for a long time. So what was the compelling uh, factor that had your client that you just referred to make the change from whatever it was, I'm sorry, to uh, click, ClickUp? No, Monday you're, ClickUp. you're good. From the Monday biggest to change up. is huh? I think the biggest change, what would you say for Eric? What was the biggest thing that made him want to make that switch? His operation was just kind of falling apart. <laughs> and so you're, you guys are going to help step in, and maybe the suggestion was, we're going to step in, but we need to move you over to ClickUp so we can run it correctly. So that, that that's it? exactly what it kind of came down to, was the fact that he was running a lot of his client management stuff through Monday, but he really wasn't managing his employees there. So really what it came down to for us, and what people told us like through our mentors and everything we kind of paid that $35,000, $40,000 for was they were telling us to run everything through Asana. They were telling us to run everything through Monday. And really what it came down to was we were running everything through Trello at the time. And we're helping people switch from Trello. We're helping people switch from Monday. We're helping people switch from Right right now because those platforms just simply don't cover everything that ClickUp does. They don't cover the client management things. They don't cover all of the tasking management that you need for employees. It's hard to manage your automations through those both those platforms because you need both of them to manage both things and then your employees have to have multiple logins for different things too and then you have to remove those access points you have to include those access points every single time you hire somebody every single time you fire somebody every single time you bring on a new client you have to set up their client profiles in both softwares you have to take away both softwares and ClickUp just manages all of that stuff in one single place it does everything keep and infusionsoft does it does everything that you would do through Asana, it does everything you would do through Monday.com, it does everything you would do through Airtable. So if you're managing a consulting business and you're trying to run everything you would do in Airtable, like trying to manage their actual strategy and everything, ClickUp does all of that stuff. It actually manages so all of that. clearly, as a part of our lightning round, we've already got the tool or hack that you guys would recommend. <laughs> For sure. But I do gotta ask you a question, Chase. What would be the book that you would recommend to this audience and why? Oh, number one, it's got to be Rocket Fuel. That's kind of what teaches you how to manage your uh, visionary versus integrator operations. Like, who is your integrator? Are you the integrator and the visionary? Maybe you're a visionary and you need an integrator. Maybe you're an integrator and you need a visionary who's going to oversee that stuff. You need both in symbiosis to run a company effectively because the point is, is if you don't have a visionary, you have no future. If you don't have an integrator, you have no presence. If you don't have employees and team members, you have nothing from the past. You have nothing to go off of. You have nothing to sell. And so really what that comes down to is you need the employee, the person who's actually managing everything. You need the integrator who's actually keeping everything in task. And then you need the visionary who's actually plotting the future. And so all of those things need to work in symbiosis. And if they don't, then your business probably is stagnating or staling in some way. And so really what that comes down to is managing your clients effectively, which is what Monday does, and ClickUp kind of replaces that, and then managing your team effectively with SOPs and making sure they have their tasks and making sure they know what to do in real time. That's what Asana does, but ClickUp also replaces that too. That's kind of what you would do with Trello or Rike or anything like that as well. Okay. 
perfect. So the book that I would recommend is Rocket Fuel because it kind of explains those dynamics. And then, like I said, with uh, the other two books that I recommended with uh, the E Myth, the E Myth actually explains those dynamics. The E Myth explains the difference between the technician, the manager, and the visionary. And then you have the agency box, beyond the agency box, which kind of explains to you how to go after your marketing. Like, how should we plan our marketing? We really shouldn't be going after new customers all the time. We really should not be advertising because new customers are the hardest customers to go after. We need to go after the 75% of businesses that are, they already have a customer list. They've already been in business for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. They already have people to go right, after that just not utilizing yeah. customers. <laughs> well, what was the name of the third book, Agency Box? Beyond the Agency Box by Frankie Finn. All right, thank you, Chase. Don't mean to cut you off, but we are over, so I wanted to kind of close this up. Um, but this has been incredible. And I know everybody's loved this stuff because they've been here present the whole time and engaging. So, you know, this is something where, Joe, you, you kind of hit it. You know, you brought up the question like, well, at what point do we need something like this? And you know, that's a question that I expect. Absolutely expect that. And, you know, again, if it's something that's thousands of dollars, I'll be the first to tell you, yeah, don't even go there. Just go get some sales, right? Katie will tell you, I'm gonna be, go get sales now because revenue's where it's at first. But again, user-friendly price. Um, you've learned some great stuff today. By the way, everybody that's one of our customers gets this recording um, in the Prime. You know where to go find that. If not, go hit up support at GlobalSolutions.com and you'll be able to go re-watch this so you can see what Kim took you through and you can set up your system with some of the suggestions that she made, et cetera, uh, because this has been very helpful. This, this is the way that not only should you run your own agency, but how you should, should suggest your clients run their companies as well, which by the way, then becomes a product of sale or service, right? Of course. So if you didn't already get that, you know, you should know that once you get your agency running the way it should be, this is something that you are, your business consultants, your local marketers, your digital marketers, you sell marketing services, but you also sell processes and business ideas that you have the opportunity to learn. And today was no different than that. I mean, today you definitely learned how to use a really cool tool. Uh, I feel a little behind. I mean, GoMobile's on Trello still. Now, of course, we have Infusionsoft. And we have other things too. Um, but it really, I was, I was very impressed with what I saw today on, on this ClickUp. So thank you, Kim. Thank you, Chase. All right. So. For having us. Thank you, Kim. How can they follow you? Where are you at? Where are you at out there on the internet? It's funny. I just changed all my user handles. I'm C O O Kimmy Snow, K I M I S N O W. Uh, so just at C O O Kimmy Snow. And then Chase is at Chase B Snow. Our new company is now Snow House Media. Oops, I spelled that kind of goofy in the chat. But yeah, you can find us pretty much all over the, all over the internet at most. I really appreciate it. And what I want to do real quick, I mean, I, I want everybody to give you guys a just warm hug, love, love, like, thank you, like, so we're going to do that first, and then I want everybody, before you click off, I've got a two-minute piece, that's all I'm asking for, two minutes more before we close off, but before, let's give Chase and Kim, let's do, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Chase and Kim, great presentation. Awesome presentation. Awesome. Learned a lot. Thank you guys. Great. Excellent. Excellent. Beyond expectations. Awesome. Fantastic. Very thank good. You very much. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Awesome. Oh. Also, Eugene, saw you pop in there. Good yeah. to see you and hear from you, man. It's been a while. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much. I'm proud. As as dad, as you said, you know, um, I just want to make it clear to everybody, none of this had anything to do with me. Like what they are doing in their agency and what they have learned to really help blow up the businesses that they support and serve and what Kim has done to automate her operation and all that stuff, it's all them. And it's amazing, you know. Um, I only took credit in the beginning for kind of some of that early on inspiration 10 years ago, but you know, it's amazing to see the evolution, Eugene. I can't agree with you more. So thank you both, I love you, thank you. All right, so before I let you guys go, I'm going to uh, just tell everybody, I don't know if you realize what's been going on in the email or if you saw my webinar three days ago or if you saw, and usually we don't sell on this and I'm not selling right now, but I want to tell you that at midnight tonight, Katie's like, bullshit, he's not selling. Look, at midnight tonight, this thing that we've been doing that's like $27 goes away. And it's Dr. Ben Atkins, 
teaching you how to crush it landing clients using Instagram. And if you're not already playing around on Instagram, you've got to start playing around on Instagram. And for 27 bucks, literally for 27 bucks, you can get some amazing knowledge there. And if you decide to go the extra mile and you buy all these upgrades, right? You got the 27 and then another 27 or whatever. I'll just tell you what it is. It totals out to about 170 bucks. Okay, that's it. For all the little upsells and all the little white label and all that stuff, if you do that, if you choose to do that, there's a big bonus package that I put together, GoMobile put together. We're gonna pay you three times the 171 in GoMobile bucks that you can use. And by the way, we've got a product coming. And usually we don't let you use it on new product, but I'm gonna make that change. So Derek, make that note, I just said that. Woo, 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 woo. But you get three times that. We're just gonna pay you 506, I don't know, $500 dollars. <laughs> Boom, Go Mobile Bucks that you can use on Go Mobile product. And we've got some other ways you can use Go Mobile Bucks coming soon. And also a one on one with me, and also a boot camp that I'm doing digitally, virtually with Dr. Ben. And last time we did it, it was like a two hour session. Everybody loved it. And it's really going to be talking about how we can mix apps and Instagram and, and instant client recipe, which is what it is. So look in your inbox. I'm in your inbox every day. I know you've seen it. Some of you probably watched the webinar. If you didn't, the replay's there. At midnight Eastern, it goes away. So let me make that clear. 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, I want to say that's just several hours away. So jump on it. It's 27 bucks. Anyway, I'm done selling because I'm not supposed to sell this damn thing. Hey, I love all you guys. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you, Chase. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Katie Fletcher, for your guest appearance today. Love to see you on. Real excited about what your next journey is going to be. And we'll talk more about that later. All right, guys, have Stay a good. weekend. Go have fun with your families. I love all of you. Go mobile or Mark, go, go home. home. Thanks, you guys. It's great. Thanks. Good Thanks. to see you. Thanks, love you everyone. all. Have a great weekend. Let's do it.